Hi, this is Seamless, and today I have a bass I would like to talk to you about, to you about, talk to you about a bass I want to talk to you about. Um, it's a variation of the vocal deck stuff. I've even talked about the uh, basic blueprints for this before. Uh, what it is, is it's a harmer patch. Yeah, it's not anything really, well, it's a, it's a harmer patch. And then it's going through vocal decks, but instead of using a vocal as a modulator, I'm using another patch. Um, it's a citrus patch. That's an FM patch. And FM bass, as you've seen me do it, has a lot of vowel-y, vocal-ish qualities. So it makes a lot of sense to use that as a modulator in Vocodex. So I'm gonna play a bit. I'm gonna play this track. This is a track I'm currently working on. Uh, if you follow me on my Facebook, you've probably already heard this, or at least a version of it. Um, but this is as as of now the latest incarnation of it. Oh man, this must be like the earliest I've ever done a how to bass. That wasn't like because I stayed up too late, and it's like four in the morning, man. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna play uh, the uh, the build up, and then the drop, but then also the chorus part of the drop, just because I think it's cool and you might like it. So uh, be warned, it is extraordinarily loud. It's just something that you should be aware of. So yeah, playing in three, two, one. <laughs> Alright, so that's what's going on. And the bass I want to talk about is this guy, these people, what's going on here. Uh, it's the main uh, sort of, I mean, it's the one that sounds like a vocal next bass. Indeed. Now, one of the neat things, like the, the reason why I'm making this video actually, is that I want to point out a neat thing that happens when you do this, when you use the FM bass as a, uh, a modulator to another bass. So um, the bass the type that I'm using right now is a Harmer patch. It's kind of a variation on um, the stuff that I did in Empire. Uh, at least kind of. No, I didn't even, eh, I didn't even do any of that. Uh, it's, just, it's kind of a Reese sharp, distorted, kind of full spectrum sound. And then I'm modulating it in Vocodex. In, in Vocodex, where is my Vocodex track? I should really label these things, man. I mean, I do, I guess, when I'm, like, right ahead. Over here. Or not. Oh, I'm scrolled over. Ah, that explains why. Okay. Here's Bokadex. So all this jazz that's happening right now is being generated by the uh, input values of the FM bass patch. And the freaking... Okay. Did my voice get quieter somehow? Come on, man. Come on. Keep up. All right, distort, yeah, because I'm crushing this track harder than ever before. Yeah, let's, okay. Anyway, um, I've actually never heard what the hard patch sounds like by itself. <sighs> Breath. Let's check that out real quick. <laughs> All right, so that's what the hard patch sounds like. And 
and that's what that sounds like with a Pokedex. So, okay, I have I have the Harbor Patch. I also have the Citrus Patch. Now, this is like this is um very basic uh, FM type vowel sound that I do every time I make an FM patch with the uh, fundamental. The fundamental and the high harmonic are both triangle waves, and then the high harmonic is being FM'd again by a sine wave fundamental. When I say fundamental, I mean it's the same note as the note that you're playing in the MIDI. The high harmonic is usually, I mean, when I do it, it's 60 or 64 uh, up. Or if you're doing it in FM8, it'd be 30 up or 32 up because your uh, default ratio is 1 instead of 2 as in citrus. So that's important to know. Now, what's cool about it is that um, when you do FM normally, like if I were to look at uh, when I have actually like a normally a normal FM patch here. This guy. Now, watch what happens if, as I move the... As I move it higher, it has different um, vowel and like vocal qualities to it, right? I move it lower. But the thing is, though, is that those qualities are only exist in those note positions. Not necessarily the note value itself, but like the, the harmonic interaction as a result of the fundamental note being what it is. So, but like if I wanted to have the higher harmonic activity, the higher the higher note value, uh, formant activity on a lower note value, can't really do that in normal FM. But if I have an FM doing doing the Vocodex thing, the note value is actually determined by the carrier, and then all all the characteristics are determined by the modulator, which is in this case the citrus. So, uh, this means that. I could have a note. I could have a set that is all that just just the high frequencies, while the note value does whatever it wants to do. And now, the combination of controlling the FM amount. Through automation clips here, and then a filter, which I'm not really doing a whole lot with from the hardware patch. I am also controlling the pitch of um, the FM modulator, and by their powers combined, they are Captain Planet. And um, also, you have exciting and new modulation abilities. <laughs> and so on and so forth so that's why it's cool when you can use a uh, an fm an fm bass i mean i made it a bass but it's kind of all i ever do with fm the um fm bass with anything else now i've done this in the past i've done this with the uh, main bass type that was in uh third watch um i also think i did it a little bit of it in uh, not empire antecoder but you won't get to see any of that until FL11 comes out and you look at the project. But um, this is the first time that I've done it with this particular kind of harmer patch. Now, the format modulation and the Vocodex stuff is is all well and good, but the reason why this sounds so unlike... I mean, it sounds kind of like stuff I do, obviously, but the reason why it sounds so different is because of the carrier. Okay, right, let's start. It's not actually clipping. I just have saw saturation engaged everywhere. See, that's where that's where it clips right there. Yeah, because uh, if you look at the name of this track, it's the hard, the hardest, the hardest track. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> so, like the the textural characteristics of this of the sound is being determined by the carrier, and then the uh, formant modulation and vocal characteristics are being applied via the modulator, which is the FM patch i hope i've done a decent job explaining that um as i said i talked about this in the past but um i didn't quite go over the fact that the uh pitch difference that you can that you can apply with the fm has a lot can do a lot to the modulation and can do things that just weren't possible with normal fm by itself <laughs> Bam, 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 bam. 
Here's a pretty good example. Um, so this one has a lower FM pitch, and this one has a higher FM pitch, but they're both the same note. Well, note activity at the slide, but um, the basically one has a one has a higher a higher format set than the other, and that's just because of the pitch of the FM modulator. But it doesn't change the note value. I'm really just hammering home the same point is what's happening right now. Now, as far as uh, Vocodex settings in this channel, this is actually less less weird than normal Vocodex activities that I do. As you can see, I haven't done a whole lot with the modulator pitch shift, which is something that I, I often do when I'm, I'm working with actual vocal samples. And that's because actual vocal samples don't have as much of the, the vowel-y definition as you'd think. The, I mean, the FM is basically only that, only with this particular kind of vowel uh, inflection. And uh, so I, I don't have to, like, screw with the pitches as much. Um <laughs> I'm showing you this just so that you can see the settings should you desire to attempt this for yourself. Um, I have the modulator pitch shift set pretty low by default. So, and then I think I also have the citrus uh, pitch itself set kind of like a little bit lower. So everything is really just kind of low. It's lower than on average than usual. The setting the modulator pitch shift here has, al has almost the same effect as setting, uh, just moving to different uh, FM pitches, but it's not quite the same. It isn't like because if you were to, if you were to put an FM note at like C five and then pitch shift the result down to to D two, it wouldn't be the same as if you play the FM note at D two because it generates different harmonics and then the different harmonics are FM'd in different ways as a result of uh, the different pitch values. It's not so you wouldn't like it's not it's not it's not it's not as if the same modulation is present at the higher notes. It's just faster. That's not quite what's going on. So that's why different pitch values are, are, are better than attempting only to just change the pitch. But as a result, if you do lower things that, um, like as I have done here, you get you can get potentially more interesting um, modulation sounds. That's something you have to determine for yourself. As well, you can kind of see the shape of what's going on when you look at the uh, vocal activity. And have to do much coaxing. Um, I don't usually. I tend not to um, use this many bands at once. Um, at least in the past, it hasn't sounded as good as it as it has. But um, I found that if I did that with this particular bash, I worked out kind of well. So that's why I did that. Not really a whole lot of reasons behind that. Um, oh, so I, uh, another thing I think is just cool about this track. Uh, I'm gonna play this chorus part, which is loud. Playing three, two, one. You hear how there's kind of a choiry thing going on? Well, this is what the choir thing sounds like by itself. That doesn't sound like a choir. Uh, well, almost all of the non like choir frequencies are being destroyed by everything else in the track. And like what's left is this kind of like weird ambient sound that sounds like a choir, and that I I didn't do that on purpose at all. That was not in, in any way my intention, but that's how it worked out. And so now I'm keeping that because it's cool as hell. And such. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And if you'd like to see anything else, uh, you can let me know, and I will consider it, and stuff, and things. This has been a particularly rambly video, and if I have been weird and not quite informative, you know, as much as you'd like, I apologize. But um, I at least think I got the point across. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. I at least think I got the point across. God, I'm so ADHD when I make these videos sometimes. I think it's because I have a whole lot of sleep to day.
Yeah. Okay. See you later before I talk y'all to a 10 gigabyte video.